Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Adam Watson and I'm here at Umbrella Labs, the leading US-based supplier of research compounds like selective androgen receptor modulators or SARMs, in addition to research peptides and a growing catalog of nootropics. Today I'm going to introduce you to Umbrella Labs and highlight the main product categories. Umbrella Labs is 100% American owned and operated and it has been serving the research community for over seven years with more than 100,000 happy customers to date. Crucially, Umbrella Labs is the only US-based SARM and peptide supplier that has built a vertically integrated supply chain to ensure high purity and batch consistency, and it boasts a verifiable record of quality control and quality assurance reports that date back for years, and certificates of analysis are included with each order. These certificates of analysis are produced by an independent third-party lab called MZ Biolabs that is located just a few miles down the road from here at Umbrella Labs headquarters. They are accredited with the National Certification Commission in Chemistry and Chemical Engineering, which means that all of their testing and analysis is done by professional chemists. As you may or may not know, the last decade has seen an explosion of interest in SARMs, peptides, and nootropics. And there's been a huge increase in the number of research papers and journal articles dedicated to better understanding the science that supports these compounds. So let's dive into a brief overview of these three categories. First up is SARMs, or Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators, which are rationally designed small molecules that can either activate or repress the androgen receptor in cells in the lab. The androgen receptor is a master regulator that changes how animal genes are switched on or off or dialed up or down in many of the tissues during testing and it coordinates a huge range of functions in animal models, like muscle growth, sexual development, metabolism, blood cell formation, and even neurological affections that affect cognition. The most abundant androgen is testosterone, which activates the androgen receptor similarly to SARMs. But the difference is that SARMs are engineered to selectively function in some tissues, like muscle and bone, yet not in other tissues, like the prostate. The rationale for developing SARMs during preclinical testing is to maximize the benefits of testosterone therapy while minimizing the drawbacks. To date, there have been over 100 preclinical trials evaluating SARMs, and the most researched ones are RAD140, LGD4033, and MK2866. RAD140, otherwise known as Testalone, is one of the few SARMs currently being evaluated in an active clinical trial which is being conducted by researchers at Yale University. Originally, it was developed for the treatment of muscle loss due to cachexia or muscle wasting, but now it's being repurposed for multiple potential indications. In preclinical testing, it shows potent activity in skeletal muscle, where it is highly anabolic. Additionally, other preclinical studies have revealed an unusual mechanism of neuroprotection in the hippocampal neurons, which are responsible for maintaining long-term memory. LGD4033, otherwise known as ligandrol, is another well-studied SARM in the lab that has demonstrated the ability to increase lean muscle mass in multiple preclinical models while being generally well-tolerated by test subjects. It has also been evaluated for the treatment of osteoporosis in other models. MK2866, also known as Osterine, is perhaps the most well-studied of all SARMs boasting 63 published studies that span over two decades. It is important to note that despite the excellent safety record of SARMs in controlled preclinical trials, there are a few scattered case reports of liver toxicity that appear in the literature, which is important for researchers to keep in mind, especially when it comes to planning dosages for future studies. Next up are peptides, which by definition are just short chains of amino acids, and they are often derived from larger proteins. Dietary protein from food that is eaten is broken down into peptides and then further broken down into amino acids, which serve as building blocks for new proteins. But research peptides are not dietary and they have a totally different function. Rather than acting as building blocks for protein, they function as signaling molecules in test subjects. To better understand how and why peptides act as signaling molecules, collagen is a great case study and it is one of the most abundant proteins in animals. When collagen gets broken down into collagen peptides within the skin, those peptides act as signaling molecules that instruct nearby cells to help make more collagen. And this means the skin can maintain consistent levels of collagen, 
which is part of the reason why cuts and scrapes can heal flawlessly if they aren't too deep. The problem is that some tissues don't heal well on their own, so research peptides are being leveraged to help heal wounds, build new blood vessels, and dramatically improve recovery after certain kinds of injury, especially those that are movement related, like injuries from repetitive actions during testing. In fact, some of the most well-studied research peptides, like TB500, work to repair injuries to tissues that are notoriously slow to heal on their own, like tendons, ligaments, and bones. There are also many research peptides that act as anabolic agents, like ipamorelin and CJC1295, which function by increasing the secretion of growth hormone. While SARMs and research peptides can both be anabolic, the biggest difference is that SARMs are designed to be orally ingested by a test subject, where peptides are usually not. That's because most peptides can't survive the GI tract and be absorbed into circulation still intact, but there are some exceptions, like BPC-157, since it's actually derived from a natural protein found in gastric juice in the stomach. BPC-157 is the subject of dozens of research papers, and it's currently being studied in multiple research models for its role in wound healing, gastrointestinal barrier function, among other potential indications related to its unique anti-inflammatory effects. Lastly, Umbrella Labs offers an impressive range of chemical nootropics, which are a diverse range of compounds that are primarily being studied in the lab for the improvement of cognition, learning, and memory, in addition to having secondary effects that result from these neurological improvements. Although some nootropics are semi-synthetic or fully synthetic, the vast majority are derived from natural sources, most of which come from plants. Lab research has also revealed that many nootropics are also adaptogens or actoprotectors, which means they increase resilience and tolerance to physical or psychological stress. For instance, bromantane is a unique compound that acts as both a stimulant and an anxiolytic, meaning that it reduces anxiety despite being stimulating. And it has been successful in many preclinical trials for a variety of indications. Another nootropic called phenylpyracetam was originally developed to improve mental resilience while in orbit in space. And it has demonstrated effectiveness in improving working memory in addition to showing secondary antidepressant effects. Those are just a couple of the nootropics available for research from Umbrella Labs. And you can head over to Umbrella's website to check out the full catalog of fascinating compounds. Please note that all research compounds, including SARMs, peptides, and some nootropics, are strictly for research and lab use only. All preclinical research must be done with oversight from an institutional animal care and use committee, and all research in general must be done with oversight from the appropriate review boards. That's it for today, everyone. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your research.